Around 4 a.m. this day, the people of the Bay Area, including me, were wakened by something rare, an impressive show of lightning and thunder. Two thousand five hundred lightning bolts hit the area in about four hours. Something never before recorded. Take this report on American thunderstorms from the Department of Commerce from 1952, which, incidentally, you could have purchased for a whopping 15 cents. Businessmen who are trying to determine where to locate things like bakeries, dairies, newspapers, or even buy insurance wanted to know about these things. Thunderstorms can affect the bottom line. In fact, businessmen were so interested in reports like these, they made handwritten notes all over them. Weather data is still very important to business. In case you didn't know, 40% of the budget of the Department of Commerce is devoted to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA. This report in 1952 took decades of data from hundreds of weather stations, and they came to this conclusion. Florida and other parts of the United States had lots of thunderstorms, but San Francisco had none. The contour map shows it in even greater detail with these contour lines in the summer, west of which there were no thunderstorms. So why are thunderstorms so rare in San Francisco? And why are we having them now? So saying there are no thunderstorms in San Francisco is a small exaggeration, but we have been taking records for nearly 200 years and they've been very infrequent. There are two reasons for the lack of thunderstorms on the West Coast, cold water and dry air. Take a look at this beautiful map of sea surface temperatures made by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It's taken from satellites and sensors all over the world. This rendering is your tax dollars at work and allows researchers and businessmen around the globe to obtain huge amounts of data that is used to predict weather and climate. It shows how seawater heats in the summertime, such as here off the eastern seaboard. But in the Pacific Ocean, like here off the coast of California, it's still cold, even in the warm summer months. Anyone who has swum in the ocean here will tell you, you will need a wetsuit. Television meteorologists tell us that cold water will kill hurricanes in the Atlantic and that the warming seas cause more and larger hurricanes. The Pacific Ocean's cool temperature close to shore follows this rule. Water cools the air above it and the thunderstorms need warm, unstable air to form. So they thrive when they move over warmer waters. This is why hurricanes are able to strengthen so quickly when they move over the Gulf of Mexico for example. The cold water off of California creates a very stable air mass along the coast and inland. In the valleys around San Francisco Bay, the dry air on land heats slowly during the course of the day and rises, drawing in the moist cold air from over the ocean. This is a daily occurrence and leads to the famous fog, which starts to be pulled in at the hottest point in the day around 3 p.m. in the summer. This makes for dramatic pictures from space and on the ground. But if there is a heat wave and a storm somewhere in the Pacific, and a fast moving cold front is forced over the hotter air, then sparks fly. This is what happened on the morning of August 16th, 2020. A heat wave in the West set a record high temperature in Death Valley and records around Northern California at the same time that a tropical storm named Fausto a thousand miles off the coast of Mexico shot off a cold front and then faded. That front hit the baking Bay Area and the rare light show started.
In the last three years, NOAA and its sister agency, NASA, have become a whole lot better at looking at our climate with the launches of the next generation of weathered satellites. The launching of the GOES-16 and GOES-17 now let us cast an unwavering eye on our climate from 22,000 miles up. These satellites are the children of previous GOES satellites, but carry more sophisticated equipment which track temperature and soil, air quality, dust, storm intensity, and lightning. Look at these composites of images that show us the interconnectivity of our ecosystem as lightning flashes across America and what comes after it, fire. This is what followed in California after the spectacular lightning strikes of August 16. California is bone dry in the summer months and into the fall, and it's very prone to forest fire. And this time, it caused fires so intense, they formed their own tornadoes. As the Eastern Pacific becomes more susceptible to thunderstorms due to climate change, more of these cold ocean storms will make their way to a hotter and drier California. And we will see more lightning. <laughs>